virus. Tom Thomas! Pass him on the turn! Good job! You're almost there! Now put the pedal to the metal! Kitties! Ha! Take that, Johnny! You lose! You want to race him again? We can. We just finished the last level. Oh, We were just getting started! Wait a second. Let's see what it says here. Congratulations. Your prize is a smartphone and a collection of brand new levels to race. All right. Class, click on it. It's not smart to just click on random buttons. Hmm. There's nothing to worry about. Whoa. Hey, what's going on? Someone messed with the numbers. There you go. Didn't I warn you guys? Do you think it might have been Johnny? Johnny! Of course! He got upset that we won, so he put on the cap of invisibility. Then he snuck into the room and deleted everything from the computer. Stop! What are you talking about? A cap of invisibility. This has nothing to do with Johnny at all. Looks like you got a virus. Then we need to get Tom Thomas's mom in here. What for? Isn't it obvious? She's a doctor! She'll get rid of this virus in no time. That won't work. Quit it! A computer with a virus isn't treated like that. A doctor won't be able to help here, especially a dentist like your mother. Then who can help us? You need special software for that. Antivirus! A computer virus is a destructive computer program. It can not only delete or steal important information, but completely destroy your computer. And the scariest thing about this virus is that it spreads very quickly and can infect the other computers on the network, very much like a human illness. To find and stop these viruses, you need to use an antivirus program. Antivirus programs also protect computers against new infections. And by the way, your dad's computer uses antivirus software. And mine doesn't have it? No, you won't let anyone near your computer. You never have any time. Dad, let's do it later, okay? I've got to finish one more round. It'll only take a minute. Oh, look at that. The virus is starting to wipe out everything now. That means this computer will disappear. And this room, too. And... And all of us! Stop! Stop! Quit panicking! We have to save the computer right away! Tom Thomas, your dad has a box with antivirus software. Bring it! Games, music, cartoons! There are so many interesting things on the internet, but just like in the physical world, you have to follow some rules when you're online. First, you should only visit websites that you know. Sometimes a destructive virus could be hiding behind a pretty picture, and there are plenty of scammers on the internet. That's why you should never give anybody you don't know well your address or send an SMS so you can download a free game. If you happen to get a letter or a text from a stranger, you should show it to your parents right away. Only communicate with people that you know. And don't just sit all day playing on the internet. There's still nothing better than going outside and playing with friends in the fresh air. should only be installed by an adult. Otherwise, your parents will figure out you got help from Fixies. Sorry about that. All done. And here comes my dad. Dad, will you install this on my computer, please? You need it right away? How about a bit later? No, we can't keep putting it off. There you go. Now your computer is protected. 
come you became so responsible all of a sudden? Oh, Dad, you don't know what kind of viruses are out there roaming the net. You're so right. 92, the wheel. 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100. And 101, 102, 103, 104, oh, I forgot. and 100 and... No, Lick! Hey, come on! Tom Tom has promised to give me a ride outside on his bicycle. I gotta get going. Lucky you. I'd love to ride on a bike. Yeah, it would be a lot of fun. You're not allowed to go. Why can't we? Tom Thomas isn't your friend, all right? He only invited me. If you want to take a ride on a bicycle, then go find your own human friend to invite you. Well, Tom Thomas, you ready to go? We can't. There's no way we can ride this. The tire's got a hole. I try to fill it, but the air comes out. Well, then what should we do? I thought you'd know what. You're the fixie here. We, I mean, I didn't study it yet. Hang on! Tula, did you? Wait a sec. We found a hole in one of the tires of the bicycle. Hmm. You mean the one that only gives rides to friends? Don't be like that. Please help me out. I thought Tom Thomas was only a friend of yours. Uh, why don't you go and ask him yourself? He could be your friend, too. For thousands of years, wheels have been helping people all over the world. The wheel's ancestor is a lock. People would put logs under heavy loads to move them. Then people came up with the idea of slicing the log and connecting the slices with an axle. And there it was, the wheel. Wheels made life more convenient. Later came wheels with spokes, metal rims, and rubber tires. Soon people were wheeling around the world in and on all sorts of vehicles. Potters, mills, clocks. There are just so many different uses for a wheel. And with the steam train, steamboat, and cars, wheels spread all over the world. They even reach the planet Mars. The wheel really is one of the simplest and yet most amazing of all human inventions. Whew, it's off. So what's next? Now you take out the inner tube. You mean this rubber thing? Yeah, that's your inner tube. There's a hole there somewhere. Pump it up, Tom Thomas. Then we can see where the air is coming out. <laughs> that's not a good way to find the hole, Nolik. Why isn't it good? Because the hole might be really tiny. Then how do you find it? To find it, we need water. How come? Yeah, how come? Now I get why we need water. There! See those tiny bubbles? Yeah, do you see them? That's the air from inside of the tube. That means the hole is right there. Nolik, you're a genius. Hooray! Here's the hole I found. Look! Will you let me put on the glue? In my pack -a mat I have just the right kind for this. The hole is right here, right where I found it. But first, we have to make sure that the rubber is dry. Looks like it's dry. Then let's put the glue on. It's all fixed. Finish! All right, it's ready to go. Hooray! Digit Tula, you coming with us? I don't know. We weren't invited. I'm sure he'll invite you. Right, Tom Thomas? Of course I will. We're friends, aren't we?
yellow. Green! All right, let's go! Tom Thomas, why did we stop? There's a crosswalk. When there are lines like that, you have to let pedestrians cross. Go on! <laughs> Thanks! Have a good trip! Why do we stop now? There's no crosswalk. But that's a crossing gate, Fire. You have to let the train pass. Nolik, come on down. Check out this traffic light. It's new. Is that a real traffic light? Wonderful, isn't it? Yeah. It looks awesome. Nolik, where are you going? Stop! Today. Now look at it. Uh, you were supposed to let me cross. You ran into the street when the light was red. A traffic light is a street lamp that sends multicolored signals to vehicles and pedestrians so they don't get in each other's way when they're on the road. When the light is red, it means stop. You must stay where you are. A yellow light tells drivers, caution, prepare to stop. You are only allowed to start crossing the street after the traffic light changes to the color green. And even then, it's important to remember, look both ways before crossing. Got it? You can only cross on green, Nolik. Even really little kids know that. But the light was green. No, it was red. No, green. It, it was, was red. red. It was green, I swear! Maybe you're colorblind or something. Yeah, possibly. Uh, what does it mean if you're colorblind? It means you can't tell colors apart. So you don't know which one's red and which one's green. Uh, that's what I am. Right! <laughs> you never mixed up colors before this. Okay. What color is that nightstand over there? Uh, it's red. And the plane up there? Oh, that's green. How about me, huh? What color am I? Green is bluish, brown is gray. With both dots. I'm what? It's true. He's colorblind. Poor kid. Told ya. Wasn't my fault. All right. We'll sort it out at home. And what are we gonna do with the traffic light? We can fix it. And we'll fix your car, too. All right. What color's the car? Purple? If you say so. We got work to do. So take a seat before you mix something else up. The road can be a dangerous place. There are so many cars and pedestrians on it, and all of them are in a rush to get where they're going. But be careful. Even if a driver notices a pedestrian on the road and brakes, it can still take quite some distance before the car comes to a complete stop. To avoid disaster, have respect for one another. If you need to cross the street, go to the nearest traffic light, crosswalk, or sign with a pedestrian on it. While you're still on the sidewalk, look to your left and then to your right and see how far away any cars, motorcycles, or bicycles are. If they're close, then just stay where you are. If the driver is responsible and polite, he will stop for you if he sees you from a distance. If you want to make yourself more visible when it's dark, attach safety reflectors to your clothes and then it will be safe for everyone on the road. Thomas, test it out. Turning the lights on. So, is it right? Yeah. Take your places. All right, let's cross. Ready, set, go! The game is up. You aren't colorblind, Nolik. 
You know what you are? You're a feigner. Me? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. I got a little of it right in here. And once in a while, it goes up here. Uh, what's a feigner, anyway? <laughs> <laughs> Money. Hello? Uh-huh. Fire, can you help me, please? Sorry, Verda. I need to go to, uh, the warehouse right away. But I helped you yesterday, didn't I? Well, I helped you the day before that. Yeah, well, what about last week? I helped you three times, remember? Well, I... Uh... You helped one another when it was time to. I don't see why you have to count. Of course not, Tula. You ask for the most help from all of us. I do not, Verda. Look how Elisa helps Professor Eugenius. And she doesn't argue with him. Of course not. She's in love with the professor. Actually, it's her job. And for helping the professor, she gets money. Hmm, money. That's a smart idea. <laughs> money constantly moves from one hand to another. A person does his job at work, and in exchange, he gets money for it. He can use the money to buy things he wants, like clothing or food. Or he can pay somebody else for their work. Like getting a ride from a taxi driver, a haircut from a hairdresser, or a computer repaired by a technician. All people take part in this circulation of money. But unlike people, fixies don't use any money. We do just fine without it. From now on, we'll do it like people do it. If you work for somebody, they give you money for it. And if you need some help, then you pay. And that'll stop the arguing. And all the false accusations. And those are for Simka and Dolph. Now it's all fair. to do with it. You don't know? You pay for someone to help you. I don't like this new idea at all. At all. Money is made out of cotton and linen. It's stronger than normal paper made out of wood, which means it doesn't rip as easily, even if you fold it thousands of times. The ink used for printing money is special, too. It won't rub off the paper or fade in the sun. And that's not all. The ink has secret additives that can only be seen if you look at the money under a special light. This helps protect people from fake money. It is for the same reason that watermarks, metal strings, and teeny tiny writing is also used on money. This writing's very hard to read, unless you happen to be a fixie. 
I hope I didn't say more than I should have. Well, all done. It's time for a test. But what are we going to print? A word with real value. Yeah, something really precious. No, it's not money. Right, it's so much better. Friendship! Teesh! Beauty. Show off, Dara. And one. Ha! Check that out. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> it's a shame Fire didn't see that. I'm just uh, training for school. You're the one that's doing all these twists and turns for Fire. Hmm, me? It never even crossed my mind. No, like slow down. <sighs> Tula, why don't we go and play some chess? Don't you think that figure skating's beautiful? Turn me! Uh. How cool! <laughs> oh, why did you yell like that? I just got a pair of tickets to see the one and only Vector. <gasps> Splendid! And who's going with you? Actually, I don't know. I haven't thought about it yet. What's there to think about? Just invite the most beautiful girl in our school, right? Yeah, not a bad idea, my friend. Did you hear that? The most beautiful one will get invited. Well, I'm not even interested. And you know what? Neither am I. Our world is full of beauty. There seems to be no end to the beautiful plants and animals and the gorgeous mountains, forests, and lakes. But even that's not enough for people. They create their own handmade beauty, too. Artists paint beautiful pictures. Composers write beautiful music. Architects create beautiful buildings. And fashion designers make beautiful clothes. Not even scientists stay out of it. They create beautiful ideas. These ideas can be the basis for the creation of new technologies that make people's lives better. Everyone has their own idea of what's beautiful. There are as many opinions as there are people. But everyone tries in their own way to be beautiful. Both people and fixies. Please help me, Tula. How can I become beautiful? Huh. I don't know. Go and ask Verda. Look at her. She's got it. What has she got? What's the most beautiful thing about her? Oh, well, her hairpin, her hairstyle. The green looks great on her. Green looks great. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, see you later. Hmm? Tula. Huh? What's your opinion? Fire, do you think he likes Simka? Looks like he does. Is it because she's a redhead? Orange? Hmm, now I get it. Well, is that close to her color? Not really. It needs more green. <laughs> What makes a person really beautiful? Fancy clothing? Bright nail polish? Dyed hair? Those don't make you look your best. Here's a much more reliable recipe. First, wash off and comb your hair. See, you're looking more beautiful already. Now change those dirty and wrinkly clothes for clean ones. Huh? That's even more beautiful. And finally, if you eat less sweets and get plenty of exercise, then you'll surely become a handsome boy <laughs> or a gorgeous girl. Fire? What's up? Do you think you could get an autograph from Vector for me? You got it. I love his song so much. So do I. Especially that one that goes... Computer, 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 you are super. I play my computer and turn it up real loud. I play it all morning, all day, and through the nighttime. But no, 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 that's not allowed. <laughs> I had no idea you were such a fanatic. You know, I'm not going to get you his autograph. Why won't you? Because you'll get it yourself. You know what I got? An extra ticket. <gasps> 
I thought you were going to take the most beautiful girl. All of you are beautiful, and you're the most fun to be around. Let's go. Stop! Hang on! Oh, Simka? Or is it Verda? Where are you going? What do you mean, where? To the concert! <gasps> mm. <gasps> mm. Verda? No, Simka. Or vice versa. I'm so confused. Come on, Tula. Can't you recognize them? This one's Simka, that one's Verda. Let's go or we'll be late. Hmm. Blondes are always the lucky ones. Yeah. I guess we should have made our hair blonde like Tula's. Musical notes. Yeah! No! Yeah! No! Yeah! No! Hey, what a thoughtful conversation you're having there. Been going on for a while? Yeah! No! Simka, please tell Moloch what this is. A present, right? Uh-huh. From Katya. And it's got a secret code right here, you see? <laughs> There's no secret on there. They're just notes. Musical notes. Ha! See? I told you. The squiggles could have been music. I don't believe you. Come on, two people said the very same thing. Simka is not a people. She's a fixie. Anyway, there are two of us. You're ganging up on me. We're not ganging up on you, Nolik. Music is something you can play or listen to with your ears. But that's not all. You can also write it down. When we want to write down words, we use letters. And if we want to write down music, we use special symbols called musical notes. There are seven notes. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, and ti. The higher the sound, the higher the note sits on a set of five horizontal lines called a musical staff. Notes that look like this last longer, and notes like this are short, quick notes. Thanks to sheet music, people can read music like reading a book and then sing or play it. Until I hear you play me what you say is there, I won't believe you. On what? You know that we don't have any instruments. Try using spoons to play it. You think you're being funny? Hey, stop arguing. I know how we can play this song. We can use water. Water? <laughs> Let me get this straight. Are you trying to play the music or are you trying to wash it? That's right. Pour it in there, Tom Thomas. Some more. Hear how the sound changes? Uh-huh. Stop! Now, start pouring water in this next glass until you hear the note called T. Stop! You got it! Now pour here? Yeah. We still have one note left. And what do I do if my mom comes home? What do I say I'm doing? That you're learning to play music while you're washing the dishes. That's it. That's the high do. Now we have all the notes we need. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, and do. Class. Go on, Tom Thomas, play. How about we all play it together? Musical sounds can be produced in a variety of different ways. Violins and cellos are played with a bow. When the bow is rubbed against the string, the string vibrates like it's shivering, and that produces a beautiful sound. A guitar also has strings, but they make sound when they are plucked. And inside a piano are special hammers that hit the strings when the piano player presses down on the keys. Instruments like trumpets, trombones, flutes, and pipes make sound when air is blown through them. That's why they call them wind instruments. There are even instruments that make sound when they are rubbed by a wet finger. Try wetting your finger and carefully moving it around the rim of a wine glass. With a little bit of practice, you'll hear a lovely sound. Well, are you two ready? Yeah! yeah. Great! All together now! I know Happy this! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday, Tom Thomas! Happy birthday to me! Tom Thomas, we also wish
wish you a happy birthday. You see, Nolik, and you didn't believe that this was music. But I was the first to guess which song it is. Hey, thanks so much for helping me figure out Katya's present. And how about sending a song to Katya? Yeah. We can write down a musical note to a song about the Fixies. The Fixies? We can't. We can't write down the words, but if it's just the notes there, then it's no problem. Hooray! Want to play it? Of course we do. Machines. They don't exist. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> what a shame. I learned pew, that. Pew, pew, studied pew, that. Pew, pew, well pew, done, Tula. Pew, 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 oh. Oh. What did I just bump into? What do you mean, what? Into a time machine. But I thought time machines aren't for real. Of course they are. You get in and take off for the future. Or the past. Splendid. Lots of us would love to be able to travel in a time machine. Maybe to go back in time and fix a bad grade. Or to get a peek into the future. Of course it would be interesting. But time travel isn't possible. And thank goodness! Just imagine how mixed up everything could get. Someone brings back a dinosaur from the past, while someone else brings aliens from the future. No one would need to invent anything. Appliances would sit unused. And Fixies would have no work to do. It's awful! So you've got no idea of the answer. I studied this, but I don't remember. Too bad, because tomorrow we've got a hard test. Make sure you're prepared. I'm sure I'm gonna fail. You're gonna pass? You studied all of this, right? So? So you just need to stop worrying so much, that's all. I wish I could. <laughs> Poor girl. How can we help her? Hey, I know how. This morning, Tula believed that that thing over there is a real time machine. Sounds like an anti-scientific plan. Stop worrying. It's simple. We'll send you to tomorrow. You'll sit down, take the test, and come right back here. I wish I could go. It's like a dress rehearsal. The main thing's not to worry. Then what do I do? Uh, you just pull on that wire and you'll get them back. Well, time to go. Wow, it's tomorrow. Hi there. Are you ready? Uh-huh. Grandpa's got sick, so I'll be giving you your tests. I'm scared. Don't worry. It's just a rehearsal. Well then, who had the best test? Congratulations, Tula! Oh, so cool! Awesome! That wasn't scary at all. Impressive. By the way, what's wrong with the professor? Uh, Grandpus! Uh, you know, don't you? A bolt fell on his head. You dropped it, remember? I did? Yeah, yesterday. I'm not sure I like this future. Well, how did it go there? Later. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. Oh! Leave this on until tomorrow. What is this? Come back! No! If I do, I could hurt you! Me? What for? Wouldn't it be incredible to travel into the future and see what you will become? Unfortunately, that's only possible in our dreams. But if you have a dream and aren't afraid of challenges and setbacks, your future can turn out just the way you imagined. Do you want to become a champion? Then you need to start your training right away. Do you dream of becoming the best programmer in the world? Then first pull up that grade in math class. Do you dream of sailing the oceans? Then you'll need to do a lot of reading because a captain has so much he needs to learn. Start creating your future right now. And we Fixies will be right there to help you, making sure the machines you need to reach your dreams will keep on working for years and years to come. Hey, 
Hey there. Are you ready? Uh-huh. So far, everything's exactly the same. Cool. Take this, please. It worked. And pass out the tests. You may begin. These questions are different. Who had the best test? Congratulations, Tula! What am I worried about? I know everything is going to be fine. Tish! Oh, uh, well then. All of your test results are great. <sighs> Only none of you could guess what this device is. What do you mean? Isn't it a time machine? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's for <laughs> automatically watering plants, that's all. You see? Cool, right? Wow, it's fantastic. So hang on, you guys tricked me? But you passed the test, right? Well, all right. Then I forgive you. <laughs> <laughs> the spray can. Uh-huh. Footprints. Just like I suspected. Are those your footprints? Not, Not ours. ours. Then what's on your shoes? What a mess I got into. <laughs> <laughs> it's bug spray! Elisa, <coughs> what a terrible smell. What is it? It's poison. <coughs> Why do we need poison? I've had this gnawing suspicion for quite a long time that something is living in our laboratory. And so, yesterday, after it got dark, I quietly dusted the table with flour. And so... Look, don't you see? Footprints. And I want to destroy them. <gasps> destroy who? You really haven't figured it out? Cockroaches live here. A cockroach? That's <laughs> what you think you are. Eh, uh, what makes you sure that it's a cockroach? What else could it be? Well, uh, maybe a spider. Hmm. Well, spiders are cute. And nice, too. But then where is the spider where? Uh, uh, I don't know. Exactly. It's cockroaches. That stuff is gross. Where's that stuff coming from? It's from an aerosol spray can, Nolik. <laughs> aerosol is made of tiny little drops and particles that can hang in the air for quite a long time. Dust, smoke, and fog, they are all aerosols. People learned to make aerosols long ago. For instance, they took a liquid that repels mosquitoes, poured it into a can, and injected some gas into it. Then, when you push the button, the gas forces the liquid to go out through a tiny hole, turning it into a bug spray. That spray will poison the fixies. We have got to stop Elisa. Let's destroy the aerosol can. we switch it with a can of whipped cream. Quit joking. We've got to get Elisa to believe that it's a spider and not cockroaches. She thinks spiders are cute. You're right. Let's go get Buggy. Spray cans have all sorts of different uses. For example, they're very convenient for getting medicine into a sore throat. They can be used to fill the air with the sweet smell of perfume or to cover unpleasant smells with deodorant. Spraying paint from a can is also very useful. It applies the paint very evenly. Some spray cans are even used for food. But there can also be deadly poisons inside of spray cans, like bug killer. So make sure you know which one you're using. And you must always remember how to handle spray cans properly so that nobody gets hurt. You must never open, take apart, or pierce a spray can. And spray cans should never be heated or put next to an open fire because they contain gas that can explode. Buggy, we need your help. 
Hang on. Buggy, don't be scared. We're your friends, right? Would you help us, please? <gasps> there are new tracks here. Well, roaches, prepare to die. Are you ready? Go ahead. Run! <gasps> oh, don't kill Buggy. No! <gasps> you are so cute! What a sweet little spider. Can I be your friend? That worked great! I hope that's the end of her spraying that poison. My little spider, I almost poisoned you. Spider, where are you going? Aren't we friends? Yeah, that's a good idea. You're better off being our friend. Buggy, wait! She's upset. She could have been poisoned and we didn't tell her. I'm sure she'll forgive us if we go and apologize. The Submarine. And the submarine disappeared into the ocean deep, leaving the vicious sharks high and dry. Ugh, that cartoon was super! Class! Splendid! Uh, I wish we had a submarine, too. What do you say we make one? But we don't know anything about building a submarine! What makes you say that? The most important thing for a submarine is to be airtight so that it's impossible for water to leak in from outside. And inside, there needs to be a reserve of air for breathing. For a submarine to go underwater, it uses special containers. When the containers are filled with water, the submarine becomes heavy and starts submerging. When it's time to take the submarine back up to the surface, the water in the containers is switched back for air and the light submarine climbs. And what are we going to make it out of? Out of, uh, broken toys. And where are we going to sail her? In the aquarium. Tula? That's silly. Nolik's little and he's not scared of this. Yeah! Well, all right. Cast off the lines! The who? Unhook the rope, it means. Ah! You should have just said that. Are you ready? Time to take her down. Hooray! We're sailing! It's just beautiful in here. There they are, the vicious sharks. Time to scare them. Turning right. Go after that one. You can't escape <gasps> from us. Please stop it. Come on, come on, come stop on. Stop torturing the fish. It's terrible. <laughs> what? Oh, oh, what was that? I don't know. There's algae wrapped around the propeller. I want my mom to see her. Just be calm. There's no need to panic. Let's try taking her up. It's not working. Of course. No wonder I was scared. And so what do we do now? How about we open the hatch door? No, we can't. The water would pour into here, and then we would all drown. Well, in that case, I don't know. I need to come up with a plan. Yeah. <sighs> the world's first practical submarine was built almost 400 years ago in England. It was made out of wood and couldn't dive very deep at all. Inside the vessel, rowers sat with oars, so it couldn't move very quickly either. About 200 years later, the oars were replaced with a propeller. But the propeller on that submarine could only be turned by hand, making it a slow submarine as well. Any good swimmer could easily outrace it. It was only with the appearance of electric motors that submarines started submerging to great depths and moving through the water at very high speed. 
Today's modern military submarines use nuclear reactors for power. These submarines can stay underwater for months without resurfacing. No, we won't, mate. Ah! Ah! Oh! Chances are better the fish will eat us. You never should have teased them. Yeah, we're ah. in trouble. Ah. 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 Didn't I warn you, didn't I? And you wouldn't listen. You did everything just the opposite. Wait, it might work. Let's rewire the battery the opposite way. We should switch the plus and minus. How come? Because then the motor will start to turn the other way, forcing the algae to unwind. Finish! Hey, quit it! We won't bother you anymore, all right? Peace. Thank you so much, Tula. You really saved us. It's just because I was the one that was most frightened. No, it's because when things got really scary, you kept your cool about you. Wouldn't it be splendid if next time we built a helicopter? The program. All right, let's check in. Say good morning. Good morning. Lift your arm for me. Lower your arm down. <laughs> it works. <laughs> Excellent. Hi, Professor mm. Eugenius. Hello, Fixies. Nice to see you today. So what is it you're inventing today? I'm improving the manipulator. Now the device has sight, hearing, mm -hmm, and even a voice. Good morning. Oh, wow. If this thing had a brain, it would be just like a human. <laughs> but it does have a brain. See how Professor Eugenius attached a computer to the mechanical arm? The computer's a brain, you mean? Well, not quite. The computer's just a piece of metal. Good morning. What makes a computer intelligent are the programs inside. Imagine that you came home from school and found a note from your mom. Change your clothes, eat lunch, clean the dishes, and do your homework. That's about what a computer program is like. It's a set of commands that a computer carries out in sequence, one after another. Programs are also called applications. There are a lot of them in computers, tablets, and phones. It's the computer programs that make these devices so smart. There we go. I have tweaked the program. Let's see. Now the manipulator, upon my command, uh, uh, is going to wash this dirty mug. Manipulator, a dirty mug. Now, eliminate the problem. Executing. The problem has been eliminated. <laughs> I don't think it understood what you said. <laughs> Let's try it again. Clean up the shards. Don't understand. Well, just sweep the floor. Don't understand. Oh. How about rid the laboratory of any foreign objects? Understood. Executing. I see two foreign objects. Hey! What are you doing? Hey! Stop it right now! They're not foreign objects, they're my friends. That's better. Another foreign object. I'm not foreign. Another foreign object. I belong object. here. Foreign. I belong here. Foreign. I belong. Foreign. <laughs> Enough! Stop it! Down! Understood. Extending arm. Stop! No. Sit! Lie down! Down! Oh, over here. Ah. Enough! Your program! Doesn't seem to be working right. For sure. It must have some glitch. Ah! Modern devices often work under the command of different computer programs. And these programs can malfunction. 
For instance, a car alarm might go off for no apparent reason. Or a computer stops following your commands and starts doing strange things on its own. Or your phone freezes up and doesn't respond no matter how many times you poke at it. If this happens to one of your devices, it's recommended that you restart it. Or turn off your device and turn it back on again. Sometimes it helps and the device comes back to life. But if that doesn't help, you may need a repairman to figure out if it's a problem with the program or with the device itself so he can fix it. How are we going to stop this thing? Oh, we need to disconnect the manipulator from the computer. That's brilliant. I'll distract him and you pull the plug out. <laughs> Don't. That's my sensitive spot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are you ready? <laughs> and one. Ow. Yeah. And two. Ah, I see what's wrong. What? what? The program has a little mistake. There we go. Now the manipulator won't act up. Let's check it. Hang on, no way. That's enough for today. We still have to clean up this mess. Don't worry. The manipulator can help us out. The Sith. Dad, what time is Mom getting back from her conference? She'll be back in an hour. What surprise can we make for her? Let's bake her buns with raisins in them. They're her favorite. That's a great idea. Ah, uh, where do we keep our recipes? Huh, they're not here. Where could they be? What are you looking for? <gasps> a recipe. They're in the drawer by the stove, over there. Great, thanks a lot. Here they are. That's fantastic. Let's see, what do we need? Milk. Flour. Eggs. Some cinnamon and raisins. The cinnamon's right there. But you're out of raisins. Uh, we're out of raisins. Can we make them without? No, Mom loves them with raisins. Ah, it's too late. The stores are closed. Cereal! We got cereal! And so? It has raisins, look! Tom Thomas, you're a genius! Why don't you be in charge of the raisins? Tom Thomas, what does Mom use to knead dough? The mixer. How about the mixer? Hmm, not a bad idea. I don't think you have enough raisins. But you haven't made the dough yet. It'll be really quick with the mixer. All right, Dad, we'll see who finishes first. Come on, faster, faster. Don't be so clumsy. If you think you're so good, then why don't you help? Fine, we'll help. <laughs> Catch! What's going on in there? We picked everything off the top. We have to dive down. Then dive. Hurry up. Dad's almost done putting the mixer together. Where are the raisins? It's dark down there. We can't see any raisins. Well, try diving again. No, this way won't work. We need a filter. In order to separate seeds from the husk, air from dust, and water from harmful particles, we use filters. The simplest kind of filter is a metal netting. These kinds of filters are installed in washing machines and dishwashers. They keep the water clean by capturing small debris and sand. As a result, machines work better and go longer without breaking. In other words, filters help separate what is wanted from what isn't. I think I know what Mom uses. Perfect. That filter's a sieve. Grab the bowl and hold the sieve over it. Pour in the cereal. Now shake it so the tiny flakes fall through the sieve and the raisins stay in it. Turning the 
mixer arm. Then you need to shake faster. <laughs> Dad, you're spraying the batter all over the kitchen. The mixer's too powerful. The mixer's fine. The batter's too liquid. You have to add flour. Add flour. Oh, right. How do you know all this? Shake it some more. No need. I shook all the flakes through it. Glass. It really worked. Dad! What? Ready to put in the raisins? Look at you! How did you get them all out so fast? By using our sieve, Dad! Do you know the story about Cinderella? Her evil stepmother wouldn't let her go to the ball. Instead, she poured peas into a sack of cinder and ordered Cinderella to pick them all out. But what most people don't know is that it was Fixies who helped her separate the peas from cinder with the help of a sieve. That's right! Cinderella was friends with the Fixies. You can find evidence of Fixies in a number of tales. Don't Tom Thumb or Thumbelina remind you of somebody? How did these tiny characters make their way into fairy tales? It's quite possible that long ago, a Fixie who wasn't paying attention was spotted by a storyteller. And that became the inspiration for countless tales. All right, you can open your eyes. Ta-da! Beautiful. Whose idea was this? Tom Thomas. Mmm, they're so good. What recipe is this? Tom Thomas found it. And you remembered that I love raisins. Tom Thomas sifted them out of the cereal. Well done, Tom Thomas. All by yourself? Shh. I should say so. Tish! The dishwasher. Can't catch me. You won't catch me. <laughs> Enjoying yourself? Without a care in the world. What? We have more cares than both of you together. Yeah, anyone can see that. Wanna bet me? How about we try doing your job and you try doing ours? And whoever loses has gotta grant the other's wish. We have a dishwasher here in the kitchen that isn't working, and you're distracting us with your nonsense. Wait a sec. Let's do it. Find the broken part. Good as done. Find it where? <laughs> you're the adults now. Go and find it. Just look out for yourselves. And you kids, time for school. And I better not hear that you were misbehaving. Was I there when they taught us about dishwashers at school? <laughs> the main element of a dishwashing machine is this part called the sprayer, which looks like a propeller. After the dishwasher's pump delivers water, it is warmed, mixed with detergent, and then pushed up with high pressure. That makes the propeller spin very quickly, so it can shoot out the water with a force strong enough to wash all of the dirt off the plates and glasses. But it does it carefully, so that dishes not only come out sparkling, but unbroken as well. Is this a parent-teacher conference? It's not. It's an experiment. For today, I'm Simka. <laughs> and I'm Nolik. All right. Who's ready to tell the rest of the class what we studied yesterday? Simka. Yesterday? Oh. You forgot. Be seated. That's an F. Mm-hmm. I think the problem is in the control panel. I wonder if the dishwasher ran out of water. Ah. Papus, don't argue with your wife. Yoink. This one is working. And so is this. <laughs> you know what? Why don't we just wash those dishes? But that would be cheating. No one will find out. The dishes will all be nice and clean, and bam, we're the winners. <laughs> Check it out, we are all done. How come the indicators aren't lit? Fixies have to fix things. And what do you call this? And you, did you both go to school today? Of course we did. I, I mean Simka, 
got an F for her answer. Well, thanks, Marcia. And did you play with Tom Thomas? You know that we don't show ourselves to people. Tom Thomas isn't any human. He's our friend. Either you play with him, or you both lose, just like we did. No way. We'll play another round. The earliest kitchenware appeared about 7,000 years ago. Early people made these containers from stone or wood. Another kind of container for holding food was woven baskets. The baskets would be lined with clay for durability. Once, one of these baskets fell into a bonfire, and lo and behold, the wood on the outside burned away, while the clay was now hard as a rock. That discovery led to the invention of clay pottery that is still in use to this very day. Later on came the development of glass, metal, and cast iron cookware. The world's richest people can even have food served to them on dishes of silver or gold. Today, kitchenware is not only a practical convenience, but it can decorate any home as well. Forget it. This is impossible. Let's just tell them we give up. Zinka, how come this button is crooked and not sticking out? Because the button got jammed! Yeah! No way! You figured out what was wrong! Hm? I'm glad I kept dragging this around. Diddy! One. Papus, two, we fixed everything! Really? Three, Does this mean you're playing with him? Four, what? You think we're some quitters? Ha! Then which one of us is the Ready winner? Or not, here I come. Let's call it a draw. Each team gets one wish. Our team mm. wants you to fix my app. And you finish this game with him. Piece, Piece of, of cake. cake. 